Hi everyone, this is Zara Altair with Actation Now, and this is the Midweek Zap. And I am so excited today to have John Lynch with us from the 360 Degree Agency. Um, John, tell us about yourself, what you do, and, and um, just let people know who you are if they don't know who you are. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much, Sarah, it's for inviting me. Um, you're, everyone, please excuse the fact that I have a bit of a croaky throat and I'll cough and uh, splutter a little bit through this, but I'll do my very best to be as clear as possible. Um, so my name is John Lynch. I am a director with an organization here in the UK and Ireland called 360 Agency. Uh, we specialize in a number of things relating to uh, Google products, um, but our principal product is um, what used to be known up until a couple of weeks ago as Google Business View and has now been rebranded as Google Street View Trusted. So this is where we take the uh, Street View photography and uh, the Street View engine and we extend it off the street and in through the doors of local businesses so that um, the public can basically preview the place, get a visual, uh, a visual kind of reference of what the place will be like before they arrive. And it has numerous benefits to local businesses. And I hope to be able to demonstrate what those benefits are here and, uh, uh, and answer any questions that people might be able to have. Oh, that's great. And I, I know you have a number of slides for us and everything. And I just want to invite the audience to ask questions of, of John because there's, he's going to tell us about the difference between doing it yourself and having a trusted photographer do it. It's quite some advantages for your business. So John, I'll just let you go ahead and start with your presentation. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna do a few little screen shares here and uh, the, uh, uh, and just step through it all. <clears throat> so, so uh, as I said, um, I've got a number of tabs open here. So I'm going to be scrolling, scrolling through live, uh, you know, live um, examples, etc., for you to to be all able to see. But. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Google Street View or Google Business View got um, rebranded for the second time um, and it's now known as, in fact, rebranded for the third time, it's now known as Google Street View Trusted. It used to be called Google Business, uh, Google Business Photos and about a year and a half ago approximately it then was rebranded into Google Business View and now it's kind of come of age basically. Uh, and it's now just simply part of the Street View family and uh, uh, the trusted um, suffix at the end uh, indicates that it is a, it's a professional that's going to be able to, uh, able to do it. Um, so what, you, what it used to be is, uh, you know, used to be a, a part of Google Maps and I'm sharing different screens here. This is the old screen here and you would have gone in here, read information about it and requested somebody to contact you with regard to uh, Google Business View. Now it is simply, scroll back to the top here, it's all just Google Street View. You hire a certified Street View Pro uh, and you just simply click on request a business shoot or if you're a hotel, request a hotel shoot. Hotels are very, very specific and you have to, if you're a hotel, you have to go through the hotel uh, um, so the the difference of what what has happened is there was two parts to the the Google Maps uh, kind of imagery. There was Google Business View, and then there was Google Views, and both of these basically have been um, a, you know put to sleep. And the Street View uh, has now got a new app. There's new photography equipment, and there's now new ways to be able to create, if you want to make your own homemade 360, new ways to create those, uh, those uh, panospheres is what they're called, uh, straight from your phone, or you can go out and invest in either DSLR equipment, or even get a one-shot camera system, which I'll uh, sort of show you some information about a little later on. If you are interested in creating a little 360 video, a 360 panosphere for yourself on your camera, 
you download the Street View app and uh, it'll be on your phone and I've got a little video here <coughs> which I'm going to run through and it's going to show you how the how the 360 um, the 360 Panosphere is, is created. Now I'm just going to make sure I've got this on double speed so that it doesn't take too long and I'll talk you through how it works. So you'll open the app, you'll go to camera and as soon as you go to camera you literally start following the dots around uh, you're using your camera like so it has to be in portrait form to be able to get the best overlap and uh, and the it will not load unless you've got a um, the whole panosphere done so you have to go and go up high fill them in like so and uh, and then the very center and then you do then do the bottom half like like that now you can see that Google, you know, there's all sorts of little stitching errors there. You can see where the overlaps are not quite right. Um, Google spend a bit of time and have developed quite a lot, of, put a lot of effort into trying to get the app to work it out. By the way, you'll see that I'm trying a little bit harder there to get that bottom one. Step away from the bottom of it if you're creating these so that your feet aren't in the shot as well. So once you're, uh, you've done the photography and you hit the stop button, now you can see here that your phone starts to um, basically build the panosphere and uh, the little progress bar runs across like that and uh, yeah, our little peg man uh, runs in and out to uh, indicate that it's working on it and uh, uh, lo and behold it's ready. Then you can add a specific place. So this one here I'm adding it to McBride's Fashions. Uh, click yes. Um, I wasn't in a Wi-Fi area there when I was going so I had to jump onto my Wi-Fi and the uh, then just hit publish and off it goes and again you'll see the progress bar uh, going there and if I'm hovering over this this is live I haven't stopped the process to kind of go between things this whole thing took three minutes and 41 seconds from there being no panosphere here to be there now being a panosphere that's the recording finished so what happened there then I'm going to jump across to this screen this is now uh, if I go and I do a search in Google Maps for McBride's Fashions in Lisburn, you can see down in the carousel there is the, the they have a, a C inside, which is the commercial grade street you trusted. Um, but beside it now there is a photosphere. So actually, interestingly, it's been loaded to the wrong location. But when I click on that, that's now that photosphere is associated with. Um, McBride's fashions and you can see I loaded it and I did it this morning or not this morning at about four o'clock and within 15 minutes it was associated with um, McBride's uh, listing but this is the only place that that panosphere appears it doesn't appear in search it doesn't appear in uh, against their listing it doesn't appear in a knowledge graph so this is a very uh, obscure place to find it. Yes, I can certainly share it uh, by clicking on the little share and embed options. But the other thing that you have to bear in mind is that when you're doing these here, if you're doing this as a, uh, to promote your business, have a look at the way the image can turn out. Stitching errors here, here, bin all blurred, the roof all misaligned, all chunks taken out of it. Uh, a cut all the way through the car here, etc., uh, etc. Et so it's not professional. It's done with the phone. It is. It's fun, um, but it's not necessarily going to rep represent your business very well. And when you're inside, uh, showing off the inside of a business, you want the whole thing to look. And this is now. I'm inside the Google Street or the the Street View Trusted. Now you can see that everything's very well uh, stitched together pin sharp all the way through, no funny blurs. And the other thing is that I'm actually able to physically move around the shop. Whereas the function to actually, you can see if I look down, I'm looking for arrows. That is not available in, um, in the Street View app. You cannot create what are called constellations. So there's no way for a, a business to let you walk from one department to another or walk from the reception into the bar or a you know in the, in the case of a hotel or a if you you know to show off your change rooms if you've got beautiful change rooms in a uh, um, you know in a clothes shop or if you're a beauty salon to get into the treatment rooms etc etc 
the this means that the only option you have is to choose a single point and make your decision that that's the point that you want to show off your business. Now you can load more and more and more onto it, but they're not connected. And you can see that if that's the way that your uh, business, that you kind of did your search, you'd have to know to click on the little arrow up there. And you'd have to know to go across the, the, the carousel to find the photosphere to be able to, um, to be able to view it. This is another one that we did locally. Um, I'll go back actually to McBride's and I'll go back one. You'll notice that there is this blue dot, by the way, I don't, this has just appeared today. I don't know what it is. It's not, uh, when I click these little fellas here, it is not the blue dot that indicates a photosphere. It is just some random blue dot. I don't know why it's there. So, um, but you notice there is, as I zoom in here, that blue dot hasn't appeared yet. Yes, in uh, Temple, um, Temple Garden and Farm Shop, which is just around the corner. I did it exactly a week ago. Now that blue dot is appearing. So when you turn off and on uh, the, uh, um, the little peg man by clicking on it, uh, the little blue dot indicates that there is a, um, a, a, a photo sphere as opposed to a uh, Street View Trusted. The yellow dots indicate Street View Trusted. So I can click on one and be inside the, that particular business like so. Um, there you go. So I'm um, going to go back to my slideshow. So when a Street View Trusted or a, pa a, a, a virtual tour is done for, by a, a, a pro photographer, uh, so either a trusted agency or a trusted photographer, uh, they will load it to your business listing. You Google My Business Listing, and it will start to appear in standard searches, unlike the Street View um, uh, the street view panosphere or photosphere that we were just looking at, which is basically a non-professional one. And it'll turn up in the knowledge graph on the right-hand side in desktop searches, so it'll appear like this. You can see, like I was showing in McBride's, it will turn up in map searches, like so, underneath the information. And it will turn up, it's, you know, you can full screen it, etc. Uh, and also it is activated in the business listings in um, in mobile devices. And this is one of the crucial points. It's so mobile friendly. Um, the photos and the and the street view are so mobile friendly that they, they're really fun to use. And I've got another little video in a minute to kind of show some of that to you. Um, so as you can see, I've got a little asterisk here. 93% of uh, mobile search is done in Google. And uh, this number, changes all the time depending on who's doing the stats and over time, et cetera. So that's why I've got a little asterisk. The last time I looked it was 93%. So if anyone feels like correcting me, please feel free. Um, an underperforming listing like uh, Farmgate rest, uh, Restaurant and Country Store here, okay, you know, sure it's unverified, unoptimized, under-reviewed and, under and unmanaged. And you can see that it has very little effect on kind of attracting somebody to find out more about it. Now, this is a partially optimized uh, listing because it has some information in it, but a fully um, unverified listing has virtually nothing there. And you can even get listings with barely even a telephone number connected to it. And so it's doing absolutely nothing for the business. You can even have it worse scenarios where businesses have been trying to manage their own listings and they don't fully understand what they're doing and they can accidentally when marketplaces close, when maybe they change the business name or something like that. So instead of managing properly and changing it in Google My Business, they close one, they open the uh, uh, creating the listing, and they can end up creating a scenario where uh, the, uh, you know a search for their business ends up with, with it saying it's permanently closed, which can really damage a business. Now that from, can really that can really damage <clears throat> business, and uh, because when people go there. Oh, and they end up there, it's as though your business is closed. Yeah. And people don't don't understand that. But, John, we also have a question. Go ahead. From Sheila Hensley. Yeah. She said, so, quote, trusted, unquote, is inside only? Um, no. Or no, both no. view and inside business? Okay. No. So, let me I'll jump off this and stop sharing here. Uh, so, the... Um, trusted, you, if you're not trusted, uh, so if, the, if you just use the Street View app, you can have a, 
Uh, you can do that inside a store, you can do that outside a store, you can do it on top of a mountain, you can do it on a beach, it doesn't really matter where you are. When you, uh, when you go to load it, as I was showing show very quickly in the wee video, um, you can associate a business with that little 360. Um, so that could be inside a store if you wanted to. But uh, when you're inside a store and you use the camera to the, the phone camera, stitching can get really bad because you have something that's very near field and something that's very far, uh, much further away. And you can get really bad stitching errors inside a, in an inside uh, uh, 360 when it's done on a phone. And this is where the DSLR and the one-shot camera systems uh, would be much better to create a, a much better stitching uh, experience. And this is where the pros start to come in. But you can... Well, I, I just wanted to add add to that for clarification. When, when, you, when the trusted photographer goes to do that, um, there's both outside and inside. So you can... Yep lead inside from the outside so one of the best things that happens is right away from the outside you have an idea of what it looks like from the street yes. so as if you're driving or walking by there oh there it is oh okay and then and then the the view continues on through the door into yeah. the interior of the business it's yeah. it's really fantastic i mean and you can go upstairs and downstairs and um into special rooms and for you know restaurants you can you know add add your menu there and um there are all kinds of things you can do with your work with your trusted photographer to really do an incredible presentation uh, as far as inviting people into your business. Yeah, yeah. So, so currently the, the app, uh, sorry, loud car went by. Um, the, so the app allows us, we were uh, with Google business, with Google views, Google are terrible with their naming kind of protocols. They are. With, Google, <laughs> with, um, with Google views, it was a, a, a fun amateur environment. Uh, there were some brilliant photographers in it. Um, uh, but it was an amateur environment for people to create uh, 360s. And they they stood inside the Google View environment and they appeared as blue dots on Google Maps. Uh, all they have done is they have um, removed that as a kind of a platform and they've just said, well, if you're going to load a, a Google View up now, it's just basically a street view. It's still got the same um, a blue dot on it and we want you to use this app to load it and they've just created an app which now allows uh, the you know it manages the fact that there was lots of different cameras out there and some phones weren't able to uh, create the panel spheres and now all basically any phone that can load the app will is able to actually create a panel sphere so it makes it uh, fun for everybody but there are problems with uh, this I went out without the permission of McBride's fashion, and I created that um, that 360 straight outside. And I went outside and I did that at uh, Temple um, uh, Temple Farm and Garden. So these are user generated images that you, as a business owner, have got very little control over. Um, if it's a you, if if it is in breach of some of the kind of the finer points of uh, the usage of the app, then a business owner might be able to request its, uh, for it to be removed. But there is no guarantee, as long as it meets the standards, there's, there's virtually no guarantee that you'd ever get it removed. Whereas if you hire a pro photographer, a trusted photographer to do the work for you, you don't have to worry about your business being represented uh, by user generated images you get to actually control the images that are being generated to represent your business. And you're absolutely right, Sarah. It's a, the single nodes could be one big, one could be inside, one could be outside, but with the street view trusted photography, it is a journey, a journey from the street view through the door and into the business. So I have an experience that is approximating actually visiting there and um, it's, like we talk to um, doctor surgeries, um, 
uh, dentist practices, opticians, places like that, uh, and, and and also schools, you know, um, where they might have people with learning difficulties, they might have people with um, uh, people with kind of uh, certain nervous dispositions, Alzheimer's, et cetera, et cetera, problems in terms of feeling comfortable going to a new place. They love this because it actually, they can sit down with that, say, elderly person and say, this is where we're going to be going today, you know, Charles, or, you know, you can have a look at it. And so they have a visual memory before they walk through the door. So it, it extends right the way from a uh, kind of a retail experience uh, right the way through to you know help genuinely helping people that might find it difficult to go to a new place for the first time. Uh, so we think it's we obviously think, we think it's great. Um, so will I jump back into the slideshow? Wait, hold on a second, because yeah, Sheila has yeah. some feedback now. First, she says it would seem very worth the cost to hire a trusted photographer. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, and the thing about it is, uh, you know, I appreciate you saying that. It, it, it means a lot to us to hear that uh, because, uh, you know, Google have made it, you know, uh, easier for a business to sort of say to us as professionals, oh, sure, I can do that myself. Well, yes, you can, but the outcome will not be the same. You're not, it's apples and pears. You know, you have a single point which is located in the carousel in a map or you have something that occupies pretty much all of search. I think, you... I think it's like apples and stones. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, okay. I'll give you that, I'll give you that, yeah. Apples and stones. Uh, so, Sheila, I just want, it says thank you. All right, better understand after the explanation. You are welcome, Sheila. And uh, thank you, Sheila, because it was one of the reasons I really was looking forward to this presentation with John and we had actually um, talked about doing it a couple of months ago and then we but we knew that Google was going to be making changes and they still are um, and so we waited until September to do this presentation because there's all this renaming and the way that things show up yeah, um, but we, we don't even have our uh, official logo sent through to us if you uh, uh, I, I'll jump onto a screen share here again and I'll demonstrate how, you know, how kind of disorganized it is just at the moment. But it's, as with all things, it will eventually uh, get sorted out. So let me pop that up again. That's been there. So um, if I'm back in this, I am, if I go to this screen here where this is the Google Street View hire, I go down and I say, right, request a business shoot. So I go there and I go, right, show me the people in the United Kingdom that can do this. And when I do that, I get Dallas, Denver, Detroit. Mm. So, you know, they haven't even sorted out the, where, you know, how to get to, how to get, how to reach me or any of my colleagues. Uh, you know, it still works in the old system if you were to go through and follow, follow the steps. But uh, the you know they haven't sorted out the basics yet, and uh, you know it's a little bit frustrating. We don't have our logos, so there is a, a new logo and a new branding that we're supposed to all receive. And you'll notice that in actual fact that that's not there anywhere. There's nothing kind of distinctive to indicate this product, and that's all hasn't been released to yet. So it might have been better to leave it alone uh, to come to this in another couple of weeks when they've sorted it out. But we're nearly there. If, you know, the vast majority of the information is is, is available. Now, from from a trusted photographer or a trusted agency's point of view, do you, you don't mind Zara, if I continue on? No, continue on. Um, we were always in the situation where we had to uh, sort of convince a business that you know it's worth the investment. Look at it; it, it looks great on your knowledge graph, and you can use it on your website, etc. Um, but we were um, stumped when it came down to statistics about whether or not this was really there was a return on investment beyond that uh, which the business could discern themselves. But finally, Google has actually put some information out about this. Uh, so in Google's own words, they've done a study just there last month, I think it is, or maybe the month before, uh, uh, 1,200 approximately people were uh, interviewed with regard to it. And from a basic listing through to a business, uh, business listing with photos and the virtual tour. There is a 
jump from 24% interest in your uh, business listing to 48%. That is a 100% improvement in the interest in your listing when you have a virtual tour and photographs. And uh, this is one of the other things that we as an agency, a trusted agency here in Ireland, Google have removed the need for us to do, as anyone, um, any trusted photographer, to do the still photographs um, as part of the package. So, but because um, we, as an agency, we kind of feel like, and we would say, we recommend this to anybody uh, doing this, look, do at least three stills because it'll occupy your um, your photo panel in the knowledge graph. It'll uh, be can be used for your cover, uh, for your uh, your Google Plus page, and then a shot, of a quick photograph of your logo or a bit of branding or something like that to occupy your uh, little thumbnail image for for the business. Those three are almost essential to be able to complete the family of images that um, that make up your uh, kind of your knowledge graph your and your kind of uh, your google plus listing so we still do it even though google have now said that we don't need to do it anymore we feel that it's the right thing to do for a business and uh, you know a business is going to ask the question well why is there a blank image there or why is that not filled in so we just get on with it but a doubling of the interest in your listings now i should say there is a caveat that this um uh, this, st these statistics were generated from a review of hotels and restaurants. I think it's hotels and restaurants are easy. Um, so, and it's quite interesting now because um, now when you do the search nearby on mobile devices, all of the listings are relating to food and drink. Uh, it used to be that you would have parks, galleries, uh, cinemas, etc. were all being listed in that area, but the the benefit to restaurants, cafes, bars, etc. is so huge that that now search nearby is populated by only uh, food places. Now I'm expecting and uh, others um, others as well will be expecting them to start to reintroduce all the other types of list listings uh, into the search nearby in due course but they really are pushing to generate a lot of interest in that feature in Google, uh, inside Google Maps. Um, the Again, in Google's own words, uh, a 67, oh, sorry, I want to go back and just point out as well, uh, it, the demographics, 130% more likely to book based on a tour uh, in the age groups between 18 and 34. So if your business is driving towards that younger, um, uh, you know, that, that younger spender, um, then, you know, it makes, doubles the, you know, the, you know, just the sense of doing it is just, uh, it's almost, for me, we always just simply say, look, it's basically, once you see it, it's pretty much a no-brainer. 67% um, want to see more tours, want uh, visual, uh, virtual tours, etc., with only 7% actually saying that they thought that they were unnecessary. So, um, the, and as I was showing before, it's mobile-friendly, and I want to just demonstrate a little, um, a little video of how that search nearby and it being mobile friendly is. So this is another little video. I'm just going to double check the speed. I'm going to leave this one on normal. It's two minutes, but it's, I'm going to talk you through it. So if you open up Google Maps and you go to a specifically a specific area and you hit the little search nearby, now you'll see that it's there's explore there or there is around Hollywood. Now there's all these categories: breakfast, lunch, coffee, dinner, and uh, it'll slip across there. And you can see you can, they, they have broken the categories down into make it fast, uh, best lunches, where the locals go. They've got a very clear indication of what's doing. And now you can see here, you look at it, you can see the sea inside. And this is me now holding the device. And I've turned on the gyroscope by clicking, clicking that little button at the bottom, um, bottom right hand corner. And just as I move the device, it's actually moving with me. So the experience is like me looking through a window into this world. Um, the, uh, I come back out and there's all the photos. So it really does enrich the experience of what this place looks like and I can scan through the photographs, look at them in detail and, you know, and there you go. And then I'll move back out again, back to best lunches, scroll through. And what's interesting here is, I'm going to pause this video. And so 
I am in a, uh, I did a search in a place called Hollywood here in Northern Ireland. Um, the, this Neil's Brasserie is uh, in the Newton Arts Road inside Belfast. <clears throat> it's several miles away, yet it has now ranked in this search nearby search uh, on, the, on a mobile device. Whereas uh, in the kind of the natural thing, there's plenty of coffee shops and everything else inside Hollywood for them to, uh, to have displayed. But there is a correlation between having a virtual tour done and you turning up in these types of searches, whether it is on mobile devices or uh, in packs in, uh, um, in desktop searches. Now, we still can't say uh, that there is a causation, and I'm not indicating that they are, but I have seen lots of evidence that would suggest there's causation. Um, the, but we're not allowed to say it. But if you go back to that statistic that I, uh, I was pointing out here, Google are almost telling us, look, if you have a virtual tour, you will get more clicks, you'll have people um, activating uh, links to call you, activating links to get directions to your place, they will be linking into your, uh, your virtual tour, et cetera, et cetera. And these are, we all know, already ranking factors. The more interest that people have and the longer they spend on your, uh, the, 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 your information, the better you're going to rank. So it's, they're not saying it, but they're kind of sort of making it obvious that it's, uh, there is a definite benefit, not just in the activity itself, but you know, it's going to give rise to other activities which are ranking factors. So I'll go back to that. John, I want you to doing that. Uh, first, Ugo Levesque says, this is amazing. And Roxanne Davenport saying, wow. <laughs> right, OK, great. <laughs> so I just this is great feedback. Thank you, Zapsters, because um, the, the more you understand about this, the, in, the more positive it is for your bid, business. And John is just the best explainer is just a terrific explainer. So because Google, I don't think Google explains it very well um, as far as, as business owners are concerned. And, yeah. and so, you know, it needs that interpretation and John does a just fantastic job of doing that. So continue on with your explanation, John. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll jump back that. into my <laughs> um, So, and I am, the other thing is that Google is collecting data all the time. So you're going to see here in Niels Hill Brasserie, uh, it's got a virtual tour with it, etc. But I'm going to just be scrolling through these, uh, um, you'll see here the times. So I can choose a different time of day and it will now start to tell me based on mobile devices in that premises, quite, how many are there and at what times of day they're there. So I can now start to plan, you know, as a, as a, you know, if I'm going to be going out to a restaurant or an eatery, if there's enough data, Google will start to tell you, well, if you want to be, uh, you know, waiting when you arrive there, go at, uh, you know, half past eight. Now, yes, of course, you would know that anyway, but it is actually, when you sp uh, span through it, it'll tell you each day what are the really hot, hot spots in the day that it's going to be difficult to get served there, etc or you know when it's really popular if you really like a kind of a buzzing atmosphere etc so this is you know all great news and this is all being gathered in the field by the mobile devices just simply floating around being there so i'll continue on from there so let's um so make it fast and then you know coffees um yeah where the locals go now is a, a really interesting one so these are uh, don't know exactly, and I've done a little bit of research to try and figure out where exactly Google is getting that information, how they know it's the locals that are going there, but uh, they seem to be implying that it's, uh, you know, it's local phones that are going to these local uh, local places. And you can see there that the photos, I'll stop that as well, it's just going a little too fast for me. Um, I'm gonna roll back to there. Um, so, where the locals go, and you can see here, I'm, when I go to one of these, I'm just a second. Yeah, so see the way I'm scrolling through the pictures. So the 
photographs that the Google trusted photographer takes for you, uh, when they load them up, they will actually be scrollable in this card uh, across the top. So that's why we used to have to produce 10 images for them, and that's why there's 10 dots there. And now there's only three, but it's still important to get those in so that it again gives the user more uh, to work with when they're looking at your uh, looking at your business for the first time. And allow it roll on, and now you can see the scroll through them again. And more or less on it, and that's it. So I'll jump out of that. Please. And so back to here, um, the. Um, the, as I was pointing out as well, in the mobile devices, the by having the Google Business, uh, sorry, the Google Street View trusted photographer do your work and load it up to your listing, it creates a new Street View tile in mobile devices as well, which is really important. So you'll see here that there is, you know, there's the C inside, there's the photos, and it says Street View there. Now there's a little bit of fluctuation with this at the moment, but the vast majority of them that get loaded say Street View or, or put a new Street View in. And this is substitutes this type of experience which we used to have before, where you know there could be an old building at a, a, a or an old picture or a former business at the location that the Street View is at, or in this case, a truck actually obscuring the entire business. So that's obviously no good to that business. The um, the now I've already shown you the oh, the street the explore nearby. Uh, kind of jumped ahead a little bit there, uh, but it used to run like this that you had to kind of choose the time of day that you were going and you'd scroll down and there'd be different uh, you know different bits. They have completely rehashed this now in the last uh, in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and now instead of it being like that, they have broken it down into um, uh, four categories. So Depending on the time of day that you are, it's make it fast. Um, the, uh, the best reviews, so they base it on reviews, where the local goes, uh, where the locals go. So this is, uh, we believe, but we're not entirely sure that this is driven by devices in the area. And then they've got at the bottom specific categories. So if I was in restaurants, it might show Indians, Chinese, and you know, pizzeria, and so on and so forth. So that is the way that that's broken down. Um, so. Um, also, Google, as part of the um, the new Street View app, are allowing us to um, uh, use some single shots. So the, the, the typical scenario is, if I go back to here and I go down, so the typical scenario is, is that we would use a, a digital SLR uh, with a special panoramic head, and we would take 12 photographs to make the panosphere, which would, uh, you know, we would, each, each professional photographer would take time to make sure the stitching is right, that it, uh, it's blended well, uh, that everything's nice and sharp. Now Google have uh, produced, uh, not Google, sorry, a company called NC Tech based in Glasgow have created a thing called, a device called the Irish 360. And this is, um, this is it here. And this is a single shot system where you pop it onto your tripod, level it up, and press a button and it fires the entire, um, uh, shoots the entire area in one, in one go. Now, this, this is, you know, uh, it's an expensive piece of kit, certainly to buy it and, you know, a business would be mad to go out and purchase this for just their own. It's about 1200 sterling to buy this, uh, this device. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, um, but also there are problems with it as well. The, you know, the, it's purported to be quicker, but it's not actually quicker. Um, really, by the time you saw me creating my own 360 my phone, that was three minutes, 20 seconds. It was live on Google. Um, the, this here, I still have to connect it to the app. Yes, it will take the photograph in one go, but it'll create a huge, what we call nadir. So I'll show you in, in this here. So in, at the bottom of the 360 tours, there's this little blur. Here, this is where the equi the equipment that we bring in uh, creates a little patch on the ground. The with the um, the 360 the Iris 360, this system, as you can see, the upward angle of the camera creates quite a significant. If you put that on a five foot high tripod, would create quite a significant uh, circle on the ground. Unfortunately, I don't have an example to show you, but it is in this uh, particular environment the circle would be 
cut over all of that area there, would cut over uh, over as far as the chair, would um, obliterate the bottom of the mirror there. So in a restaurant that wants to show off a place looking really smart and slick, they don't want this black blodge at the bottom of their, uh, of their 360s. So there is a small uh, problem with it, which I'm sure uh, as further development goes on, it will get better. But um, at the moment, it's uh, not something that we as an agency will be purchasing straight away. We want to see some improvements in before we purchase that. Um, so back to here, basically, Google is dominant in search. Uh, Google Street View improves visibility in search, in maps, mobile devices, and Google Plus. It's your virtual tour when you, when you buy it, it's, it belongs to you. So you can embed it into your websites and your social media. And that's basically it. Oh, that's yeah. great. And then Thank we have, much. thank you so much. And then Sheila has another comment. She says, the mobile demo video is great. So many things I didn't know. So thank you again, John, because that's just great. And then, uh, and then you've, you've got a convert here. Bill Graham says, how can I become the first in Belize to do this? And uh, he got his question answered by someone in the audience. Let me see where that is. Uh, Hugo, Hugo did it. He said, uh, I think this will help you to know how you can get certified. So he, and with the, with the link to... Well, the, the easiest way to do it is just do a search for uh, Street View Trusted and then just scroll down and there's an option to uh, to uh, you know start becoming try and become a trusted photographer but the you know we've been doing this a long time we, we are among the first to be doing this in fact one of our team uh, is, is ex google staff and we're working on um the street view technology uh, the google business view google business photos back in 2009 i think uh, before it ever became uh, you know, public knowledge that they were even planning to do this, and uh, the, the the all the systems that are out there to try and make it easier. Um, that's very well and good. You still have to convince a business to part with money, and you know, while a one-shot system makes it fast, uh, it only makes it fast in so far as that that business person has said, "Yes, come ahead, shoot it now." But I have never walked into a business where they said yeah, go ahead, shoot it now, because they say, well, I want to tidy the place up. I want to have a look at the photographs. I want to, uh, you know, get my signs done. I need to paint that corner, blah, 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 blah. And the list of things that they want to change to make it perfect go on and on and on. Now, if you start using, going out and doing a one-shot system where you do it when they're not actually 100% ready, you're going to end up going back and doing it again. So think carefully before you go running out and buying equipment. Because <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> you still have to sell it and you still have to service it. Yeah, and another thing I heard you say, I, I can't remember where this was, but um, about being a Google Trusted Photographer is that I know for a lot of photographers, you know, it seems like a dream come true. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, I get to go take photos of these businesses and da 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 da. But, mm -hmm. Tell us the reality of walking the street and actually getting someone to make an appointment. Look, look uh, the, um, the, you know, I, uh, my background is in sales. I have run sales teams. I've been in the sales background since I've been 19 years old. Uh, run companies uh, with sales forces of 40 and 50 staff, trained for many, many years. So I'm quite accomplished at selling. Um, the it's not the easiest sell in the world. Yeah, everyone loves it when you knock on the door. But you're doing well if you come away with one deal a day. You're doing quite well. So, you know, everybody else is thinking about it, you know, come back to me in a week's time, etc. Now, if I get one deal a day, that means I still have to go back and shoot it. So that means the day that I shoot it could impact on my ability to be able to get a deal that day. Then I have to go and take all that photography and ingest it, moderate it, and get it ready for the uh, for the business. If there's a single error in it, that might cause me some problems. I may, might even have to go back and reshoot things in order to be able to make sure that it's perfect for the customer. The All these things ease into your time. And the 
I know there are hundreds of photographers uh, doing this in the UK and very few of them are doing more than five a month. Right. I, thank you because I wanted to make that that clear for people. Yeah. Uh, uh, five, five a month. If you're really set a lot of work and the and the and the upfront time of you know going door to door and introducing yourself and explaining and um, well, you know, the other side of it months it can be two three months before someone says okay now I'm ready yeah and by which stage your NC Tech Iris 360 is gathering dust underneath the, the bed because you haven't been able to sell a shoot in the last three months <laughs> and you think that was a purdy spent 1200 pounds yeah. the uh, uh, so they no the it, it it's a it's not it's not that it's a tough sell because everybody who sees it I you know I could count on one hand the number of people who have come away saying that's a load of rubbish I don't want it the uh, I do get people sort of saying, you know, in fact, our, you know, our team will get security concerns, uh, you know, the, uh, that's usually the biggest one. Like if you're in a jewelers or something like that, they might say, look, we've got security issues, cameras, etc. But we've now shot in airports, you know, um, you know, in all sorts of different uh, food security areas and so on and so forth. And uh, it's not been a problem. Uh, but it is. It's a it's a long day knocking on doors on your own to produce one deal, and it's very easy to go home thinking you've done your bit there. And but if you're you know, and I have you know, I've I've, I've got lots of colleagues that are in this uh, you know, are in the same game, and they are doing about five shoots a month, you know. And if you're getting about two hundred and fifty pounds, two hundred pounds, something like that for your shoot for a basic shoot, it's not worth the effort. The amount of work that you're putting in for a thousand, twelve hundred pounds for a month's work, uh, you know, you are into the, you know, minimum wage bracket, and you get grief if an image is wrong. And to be honest, I'd sooner just if I'm going to be on minimum wage, I would definitely not want to be getting having grief coming grief coming with it. Now, <laughs> I, you know, just I just wouldn't. I, I really wanted to bring that up because. Um, I think for a lot of people who are into photography, they see this as, you know, the big break. And uh, and it's just like any business, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. And so and you've got to, you got it. The, the, anyone who's listening, who's interested in getting involved in this, I, I would say absolutely, you know, but the your first 10 shoots, you're going to pretty much do them all for free or close to it because you're going to knock on the door of all your mates and your associates and you're going to get everybody that you know to try and help you along to get started so your portfolio uh, a, you know, is built up. So once you've got your portfolio, now you have to go to the stranger and knock on their door. And that's a different proposition entirely. Because your friend loved it. your friends and your associates, and if you've gone down to the same restaurant and eaten there for the last twenty years, of course they're going to do a little tour for you. But they, you go and start asking a business owner uh, or a small chain of twelve places, and you're saying, "Well, it's going to be three hundred pounds for each one," and they're going, "Well, I've got ten stores. That's three grand. Do you know something? I'm all right. I don't think I need it." Uh, if I'm going to do it for one, I'd want to do it for all, and that's too expensive. Now you're going to have to do it for very cheap money. And the list of things that just get in the way from you being able to make a decent living out of it. And that's, and there are photographers out there who will do it for, there was one photographer in Dublin, actually. It's a disgrace. They, they, it was a 40, 40 or 50 point tour. And they did it for under 100 euros. Mm. And that's a day's work in the, you know, shooting it, loading it, and uh, and the, you know, and all the grief that went with it. I that person did not make any money, <laughs> so it's not worth it. Uh, and the other thing as well that uh, people who are going to get involved in this now, bear in mind that this has been around for uh, since 2012. So uh, there is no such thing as virgin territory anymore. You're going to knock on the doors, and people will have been told about it before. So you have to be good at accepting rejection because they're going to say. No, nah, uh, I've been. Someone's approached me about the form. Not interested. You know, thanks very much. Because they'll have developed an opinion about it, whether or not they know. The vast majority of times, when a when a business says no to me uh, or to any of any of our team, it's because they 
don't really understand the product. Once they understand the product, it's gonna, oh, I didn't realize that, that's great. Um, so yeah, that's just what the people, anyone who's thinking about joining the program needs to be prepared for. There's a lot of rejection and it takes a thick skin. And, and it's not that they're, it's, it's brass, you know, brassy nose, it's just, it's no right now. And that can be very demoralizing when you're trying to make a crust. Yes, it is. So thank you very much for explaining that because um, it, 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 it says a lot. If, well, first, it says a lot about you and your business and that you are doing it and you're doing it well. And part of it is just what you have done today for all the viewers is to really explain it and to help people understand how it works and the benefits that it provides for the business, especially in search and, and all the benefits of the mobile search. Mm -hmm. And we're way over our time, John, so we're yeah. going to stop. But I really want to thank you. That was just fantastic. That was just uh, super. You're very welcome. And thank you to everybody who tuned in to listen. I appreciate your Yes, uh, your thank you, and everyone. Great comments and questions. All right. Thank you all. And we'll see you next week. Cheerio. Bye-bye.